For the third year in a row, things are not looking good for our local bay scallops. You've seen the headlines, you've heard the rumors, and maybe learned a bit about the theory surrounding what's going on. And unfortunately, none of it's positive. Several factors are weighing into the bay scallop die-off, mainly rising water temperatures, disease, and predation from cow nose rays. Numerous efforts by local researchers are currently underway to gather data and pinpoint what's going on. At CCE, we are specifically targeting our research to try to determine if temperature and timing of spawning are attributing to the population decline, and to what degree. Dr. Steve Tuttlebeck, along with his team, have set up a network of seven sites throughout the Peconic Estuary, consisting of eight bags of scallops. This is our bi-weekly sampling of the one of our seven field sites in the Peconic Bays where we're monitoring bay scallop population health. So these cages have been out since somewhere around the uh, beginning of May, middle of May or so. And we wanted to make sure we got them out before they started spawning. Um, so the scallops that we stocked into here are hatchery reared scallops. They came from the uh, long line system up in Orient Harbor. And the reason for that is that we weren't sure we'd have enough animals from the natural populations to be able to sample all through the season. Um, if the die-off happened, which it has at most sites, um, then we knew that we'd have a better chance of getting the animals we needed to if we stocked hatchery reared scallops. So they all came from the same source. They all started out at the same point in the spawning cycle. But what we've seen, actually this is what we've expected based on prior work we've done, is that the spawning cycles of scallops in, in the seven different areas in the Peconic Bays are actually different based on water temperature and other factors, food levels perhaps. So being able to monitor reproductive condition um, every two weeks at each of the seven sites, we really are able to fine-tune focus on factors that um, may be responsible for, for Two more weeks, uh, something we do every month, we also collect animals for disease diagnostics, mm -hmm. which are brought to Stony Brook at Dr. Basim Alam's lab. We'll look at the prevalence of the disease or parasite that is partly responsible for the die-off of the scallops. And then we'll also do surveys of the natural populations to see how they are faring in the um, context of uh, very warm temperatures again this year. And also we believe that um, spawning of scallops is contributing to that physiological stress that may tip them over the edge and, and cause them to die. So uh, that's why we're monitoring reproduction every two weeks. So we have an idea of, okay, when does spawning occur? How does that align with water temperature, dissolved oxygen levels, and parasite load? And then when does uh, when is the signature of the mortality events occurring? So this is a uh, temperature uh, salinity monitor. Uh, monitors them every 15 minutes, and um, you know this this would certainly be able to last through the middle of October when we complete the study. But bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. So we want to make sure that we have this data because we've already seen large mortality so we want to be able to look at the environmental factors and say okay you know was there a critical increase in temperature around the time they spawn so th th this data set is golden so in looking at all those things together we're hoping to be able to better understand what's uh, driving these uh, mass die-offs of base scallops.